how's everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, it's been several weeks since I've done a video, and that's because every October, my wife and I, we take a couple weeks off, and we either travel, travel to Europe or travel somewhere in the United States where I can take pictures and she can enjoy the scenery. And she's a real history buff, so we usually pick uh, areas that we can do a little tour of history. And uh, since we do take our vacation in October, that is always when Adobe does their Max uh, presentations and brings out new features for Adobe uh, Lightroom and Photoshop as well as other products. And it seems like I always come back home after Max and there's a lot of catching up to do and trying to get up to speed on the new features. Now, a lot of people like to put out those videos that just covers a little bit of each feature so you see what was all in the package. And there's plenty of those out, but what I like to do is put out a video that just covers specific features so we can see the, the little nuts and bolts of how that feature works and its practical uses. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to cover the basic nuts and bolts of the point color variant slider, which is a new slider, a very powerful slider, and one that I have been waiting for for a little while. It's been in early release in Adobe Camera Raw, where I got to play with it, but now that it's in the Lightroom, it's putting the package all together in point color. And you all know I love the point color tool, and this variant slider just really adds to it. So let's just dig in, look at the basics of the variant slider, and then look at two or three examples of how we can use it and how we can improve our photography by using point color and the variant slider. All right, now to start out with, the variant slider is a tool within point color, and we'll find point color in two places. One in our basic panel under color mixer, point color, but also if you create a mask, and we'll just create a real quick sky mask here, and you can see that we have point color within our uh, sliders for our masking controls. And truth be known, the most powerful use of it is going to be applying a mask first and then using point color in the variant slider. All right, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just talk about what the variant slider is. The variant slider is a new tool within the point color tool. If you're not familiar with the point color tool, this tool allows us to identify a specific color or color range and make modifications to it with hue, saturation, and luminance based on that color range. So by using the variant slider, we can modify that color range to make the colors tighter together or the colors to be spread farther apart. So let me just show you, give you an example of what that looks like. I'm going to bring up a color graph here of the color blue, and we're going to go to our point color tool right here. We're not going to use a mask. This is just going to be global changes. We're going to pick our eyedropper, and we're going to select this mid color blue right here. When we click on it, it's going to show us that range of color all around it that we can affect. Now, if you're not real familiar with a point color tool and how it's used, I'll put a video down below that explains this in more detail. But for now, the basic operation of the color tool, point color, we're just gonna kind of breeze through. So now that we have our color identified, if I wanna make any changes to hue, saturation, and luminance, I use these sliders right here. And it's hitting this range of colors that we see in our color box right here. Now we do have a range slider, and if we move that to the right, you can see we increase the range of effect. If we move to the left, we decrease the range of effect. So if we wanted to affect less blue colors, we would move the range slider to the left. If we wanted to affect more colors around this center mark here, we would move it to the right. Now, as we move our hue and saturation slider, you can see that little ball move in the screen, and that's just showing us where on the color scale we're going to make the effects to. All right, This slider over here, if we move this, this is for luminance. As we move, you'll see there's a separate little dot here. That was the original point that we selected when we clicked in with our eyedropper on the point color tool. So now that we've looked at these basic tools, now let's look at the variance tools. As we move our hue, let's say our hue and saturation, we're making an effect in just about every one of these. But now let's move the variance slider over to the left. And this is where we start to blend our colors. So our range of colors on the left and right of our selection here, 
become less. And as you can see, it's a more harmonious color here. And as we shift hue and saturation, it affects them all in pretty much the same way. All right? So the more we move to the left, the less we get in difference of the main color we picked. If we move to the right, you'll notice that there's a big contrast. So now we're separating our colors. So as we make hue and saturation changes, they don't affect each color the same way as if we had had them all in this area right here. Now, this is kind of abstract showing you this. I just wanted to show you how it does affect the colors. The best way, and it's the best way I learned, is you know, show me the money. I've said it before. Show me some pictures and how we can use this as a practical application. And then I kind of understand the tool a little better. So let's go ahead and look at three or four examples to see exactly what we can do. All right. So let's start out with this picture right here. This is one I took just a few weeks, a couple weeks ago in Kennebunkport, Maine. All right. So on this one, we notice that our sky looks real dark in the, at the top and it kind of fades off into light blue at the bottom. And let's say we just want it to be more uniform. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask the sky. Remember, like I said, your most powerful use of point color is going to be within a mask. And we're going to choose a sky mask. Now, once we have the sky mask, we're going to go to point color and choose the selector. And what we want to do is select a color that we want the whole blue area to be more uniform in. All right. So I kind of like this blue right here. It's kind of a mix between the light blue and the dark blue. So we're going to pick this right here. And as you can see, it has selected that color. Now we're going to go down to our variant slider because we want a more uniform look. And I'm going to grab the variant slider. I'm going to start sliding it to the left. And as you can see, our colors are becoming more uniform. All right, so now we don't have that dark spot up here and it more matches down below. Once we get everything in a uniform state, we can now shift the hue a little bit and we can uh, turn up our saturation. And there you can see now the colors are kind of getting just all uniform. It looks like a nice blue sky. That's what the variant slider is doing for us. If we move it all the way to the right, you can see we have a very dark blue sky and a very light horizon. And that might be something that you like. If that's something you like, this tool is the tool for you. You can separate those blues into like a, a dark, heavy blue sky, like deep space. And then off the horizon, you can lighten it up. Now, we can also use, let's bring this back to where we have the variance of art there. We also remember we have the range slider that's been there before. And that either increases or decreases the range of blue that we're looking at. But what it also does when we use it with variants, look at the clouds. We're separating our clouds from the sky and bringing out more definition. So that's just another just added benefit. When you use your variant slider, your rain slider is going to help you uh, take those colors that aren't blue and ease around the edges. As you can see, it's around the edges that uh, the variance isn't hitting that the rain slider will find. So we'll just leave it about like that. All right. So now, what else can we do with this? Let's go up and create a new mask. We're going to grab our landscape mask. And we already have sky, so we're going to say architecture, vegetation, and water. And create those masks. So what can we do with vegetation? Let's see what we have here. So this is all our vegetation here. That's not vegetation. I'm going to go ahead and hit subtract with a brush. And I'm going to take that out because we don't need that to be involved. Okay, so now we have vegetation. I'm going to turn our overlay off, or you can hit the O key, and we'll turn the overlay off. And let's say we want to add a little luminance and to separate these colors a little more. So I'm going to go to my point color tool, and I'm going to pick on the yellow. Now let's take our variant slider, and we'll move it to the left, which means we're bringing colors closer together. And as you can see, the oranges, the oranges are starting to come in line with the yellows. So if that's something that you like, increase the saturation then then we can do that but I like the the opposite way I like the oranges to be more bright so as we go you can see we go from orange to more of a reddish color that variance is making that separation for us without really affecting the yellow too much now we can change our work on our luminance we can uh, lighten it up with saturation a little bit if that's something you want 
You can even change the hue to see if that affects anything that you like. So if we change our hue a little bit, I get a more yellowish green, which looks a little more realistic to me. And if we look at our vegetation before, after, before, and after, let's just crank up the luminous just a little bit more. About like that, and maybe just a little more saturation. Now let's look at before, after, before and after. And as you can see, our yellows are also being affected over here because of our uh, our mask. So it's just it just gives a little more separation of color and a little luminance uh, for the trees, the vegetation. Now let's look at our water. Let's see what we can do with our water mask. So I'm gonna pick a color about right here. I just want, this looks a little flat to me. I think we might be able to add a little definition to the water. So let's grab our variant slider. If we move it to the left, we start to lose some of our contrast and color here below. But if we move it to the right, we actually get a better reflection. And let's uh, increase the luminance a little bit and add a little more saturation. We get a little better color in the water and we get a little better separation with our uh, clouds. And let's try our range slider, see if that, that really didn't help us any. So this is before, after, before, and after. We're getting a little benefit with our color, uh, point color and our range mask. Let's see, we'll pick a different color in here and see if this helps at all. Maybe down here. We'll try our variance here. Add a luminance. Just a little bit, not too much. We don't want to go too heavy on the saturation. And the hue, maybe a bit like that. So let's look at before, after, before, and after. Gives us a little better reflection. All right, so now let's look at our architecture. And let's just turn up the shadows a little bit here. And just for experimentation, let's grab our point color and let's click on the blue here. I'm going to turn the luminance up a little bit and let's try either way. It kind of brings the house right here more in line with this blue when we go to the left and then it separates it out a little better as we move this way. Let's see if we do a little bit with the saturation, a little bit with the luminance. It gives us a little better, gets rid of some of the shadows in this area here. So this is our before, after, before and after using point color in the sky, some of it uh, point color variants in our vegetation, and just a little bit in the water and house, just gives us a little bit of change. It just makes the photograph have a little better contrast with the colors that we were using in our point color and using the variant slider. All right, now let's go to our next example. How many times you take a picture of a model or a family member and they have this splotchy skin? It could be even weather related. You're taking pictures in a nice winter scene. You know, everybody's cheeks kind of get rosy, but sometimes they get just a little bit too rosy. All right. So what we want to do is we want to bring this model's face more in line with the color of her skin, which is right in this area right here. I'd say it's more of a natural color. So what we want to do is we want to go up here and grab a mask of person, a people mask, right? We'll click on this and we want to do facial skin and body skin. And we want do not want to create two separate masks. We want to turn this off. We just want to create one mask and we'll hit create mask. All right, I'm going to hit the O key to turn off our mask uh, overlay. And I'm going to grab my point color uh, selector, my sample dropper, I'm going to pick a color that I think her skin is most likely to end up being. So we're going to click right here. Now once we have our color selected, we're going to go down to our variant slider and we're going to start moving to the left. And why do we move to the left? Because we want to bring the separate colors closer together in range. Move to the left, you bring the colors closer. Move to the right, you start separating colors. So, so let's bring our slider to the left and as we do that, look at that, it brings all those separate colors into one color range. Just about like that. Now if you like that color and you just want to make some modifications, maybe bring just a little more color to her skin, maybe brighten her skin up just a little bit with luminance, 
you can do that. But since you've made a new color, you could actually click on this dropper again and click on the new color and you've got a new color swatch to work with. So it allows, allows you to expand that color range just a little bit more, about like this. Now, here's one thing that I like to do, and I found that it really works really good. Sometimes you get these hot spots. Now, I have other ways to get rid of hot spots, but if you're in a hurry and you just want to clean these up real quick, just go to your, your uh, erase tool here and get your little band-aid for uh, fixing spots without AI and just highlight the area like that. See how it just gets rid of those hot spots real quick? We'll do a real broad one here. Does a really good job. One more right here. Let's try that. So here's our before, after, before, and after. Just a really good way to use that variance tool to bring your model or uh, the skin colors to more uniform color across the whole face. All right, let's take a look at one last one. Uh, this is uh, the Nubble Lighthouse in York, Maine. And um, used a polarizer filter, and you might have this happen every now and then. When you use a polarizer filter, you're going to get dark corners uh, of the filter, depending on how strong you turn it. Uh, some people have a habit of just cranking it up to the strongest it can be because they want a big separation of the blues in the sky, maybe bringing the clouds out a little bit. But you really kind of have to temper that, right? Turn it down a little bit so you don't get some of these dark areas. But if you do get these dark areas, this variance tool is really good at removing them. So we're going to go um, to our point color tool. Well, first let's make a sky mask. All right, so we have a sky mask. And we're going to go to our point color tool, and we're going to pick the color of the sky that we want the sky to be uniformly across the whole scene. And then what do we do? We take our variant slider and we move it to the left. As we do that, you see how it's already straightened up the sky? Just magic. I just love this tool. So I move a little bit the variant to about right there. And you can also use your range slider. And you'll notice down in here, it was right the, the, the afternoon was just disappearing from me and this is the sunset coming in just really light but if we use our range slider we decrease the amount of colors that we're affecting and by doing that we kind of get rid of that little area of kind of a, a mauve or, or pink color that's coming in so if we look at our before after before and after a lot better uniform color and of course once you get the uniform color that you want if it was going to be a little darker blue sky you can bring that dark blue in a little bit just like that check your variance if you got it just the way you want that gives us our uniform color and there you have it just three perfect ways to use that variance slider whether you are uh, hitting colors in the trees or the sky or the water bringing out uh, uh, color changes in uh, your model or your uh, subject's face or any other body skin color that you want to correct. And then of course with a good landscape scene that has a lot of sky, you want to make the sky more uniform. That Barrett slider using with your point color tool is just one of the best ways to go and the easiest way to go when you're using the point color tool. Well, I hope this helps out. Uh, if, Like I said, if you have not used the point color tool and you want to know some of the finer points, uh, go to that link in the comments below and I'll explain how to use the filter sliders and how to really narrow down the color range that you want to affect. If anybody has any other questions, please, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Let me know what you don't understand and what I can help you with and I'll be glad to get right on it. And as usual, I can't wait to talk to you all again.